I'm not saying it's easy, right, if you're a club president, if you're a GM, but who stayed in that should have checked out? Do you see anybody out there like that? Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, the, we, you talked about it earlier. You could talk about the Angels a little bit about that. Um, it's just going to take time to figure that all out. The Angels, what they did, um, I, I, I could defend the moves. I like a lot of the players that they did pick up, but uh, you have to give guys a chance to come together as a group. I don't think that's discussed enough. When you have so many acquisitions, <clears throat> to bring them together, gel and become this force all of a sudden, not an easy thing to do. You look at Baltimore, on the other hand, who have come up together through a minor league system, played well last year, playing well again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people discount the fact that being together as a group for a period of time matters. So I, I think you have to consider that. Uh, checked out. Uh, I mean, I love what the Mets did. I, I, you know, regardless of what people may think, I think the Mets are absolutely right with their process uh, when it got to that particular juncture. So uh, other teams, I, I thought the other team that was significant was the Rangers. Otherwise, a lot of little uh, minuscule moves. But I did like, quite frankly, Lorenzen to the Phillies. I, I'm a big Lorenzen fan, so I was kind of interested in that. Yeah, no, that, that has worked mm -hmm. out. Joel Sherman just talking about that. Um, you know, sometimes the smarter moves are the quiet moves, right? Like, I mm -hmm. bring up the, the Orioles again. I remember, mm -hmm. like, in the previous administration, Buck Showalter telling me a long ago, hey, why don't you just go with your guys? Draft, <laughs> develop, build your team. This version of the Orioles kind of do that. They, they don't win the winter meetings. They're barely there, seemingly. I see them, but they're, they're not active. And then trade deadline, they, they don't do an awful lot. So they kind of play their hand. Yeah, when you have to bring too many guys in, that probably means things aren't really well, right? Uh, if you just have to get maybe one or two chips, maybe two at the most, it's easier for these guys to assimilate into the rest of your group. And uh, when you're, like, blowing it all up at this time of the year and trying to recreate, difficult. And that's what I was trying to point out with the Angels. I like the players they got, but mm -hmm. you can't just assume that they're going to come together as a group and all of a sudden play well, whereas – Baltimore has been that group for a while. Scouting development, that's where it's at. It's always going to be there. Um, listen, free agency is wonderful. You're going to be able to augment, yes. The trade deadline can be useful if it's just maybe one, two yep. chips at the most. When you got to, like, retool completely, it becomes increasingly more difficult. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Even you know, when you <clears> see this, uh, I've done the study of free agent signings, big money contracts. You're mm -hmm. buying certainty. About half of them you regret later on, like solidly 50%. <clears throat> All right, also with the Angels, Shohei Otani taking the load management onto himself, saying, I need to skip a start. Joe, my question is, again, you were managing this guy. Should he be in the position where he has to say that? Like, I think they've been going to the whip on him. I obviously know why. But is it a good thing where the player has to say, hey, you know what, I'm fatigued, I need some rest? <laughs> Well, I mean, I've, I've talked to you about this before. He and I had that arrangement that he was going to talk to me. It was the night before every game. Um, so, like, is he going to pitch and hit tomorrow uh, when it got to that particular juncture? Uh, does he need a doubt because his legs were heavy? That's something he and I talked about when uh, that uh, spring training a couple years ago. I wanted to rely on his input. Uh, but then again, I also mentioned, I think those two times when I was just more proactive with it. So, again, I, this is a tough one because this guy – is um, he's, he's, a, he's the unicorn, he's different, and he's, and he's chasing a lot of things. I mean, he wants to win a batting title. He wants to be the home run king. He wants to win a Cy Young Award. He wants the Angels to win. There's a lot going on there. So when you proactively just try to sit him down, it's, it's probably going to be difficult. But if he comes to you, obviously. Right. But, Joe, you said you did life. it? Like, have you, have you been in yeah, a position where you say, hey, big guy, you're not playing <clears> yeah. tomorrow? Have you, how many times did you do that? I think I did it twice. Um, Remember, I think it was following a game in Houston that I thought was really a tough game. You'd have to check on that. Mm -hmm. Where you guys sweaty, hot, even though it was inside. Uh, and just watch people. You watch people. You look in their eyeballs. You talk to them. And he's an easy guy to speak with. And his interpreter, he pays outstanding. So for me, it was that daily check-in the night before the next game. If it was a day game, obviously the night before a night game might wait a little bit longer. But it was always a conversation the day before. How are we doing? And what can we do to make this better? Every day, every yeah. time. Joe, I don't know. They, they, he pitched a complete game one hitter, and then <clears throat> yeah. he went and DH'd in game two. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't get that. Joe, it's too much, right? Or, I was or surprised. Like, I was surprised because I was, I was curious. I was curious what was going to happen in game two. Then I see that he went off offensively. Yeah. <laughs> but after that first game, I was really curious. Playing Detroit, you'd like to believe we could set this lineup up a little bit differently. That'd be the perfect opportunity to give him a little bit of a blow. Yeah, I agree. I, this is like, <clears throat> you could see it coming. All right, uh, here's another thing, Joe, along with this. I've had it. 
with catchers getting hit in the head yeah. with a bat. It's worse than taking a punch in the face. It happened again last night. It was Mark Vientos of the Mets, Sean Murphy of the Braves. What can be done? to Because this is a concussion that happens virtually every time <clears throat> with the, follow -th the unnecessary yeah. follow-through of the bat. Yeah. Yeah, the backswing. I mean, uh, what can be done? I, honest to God, I can't give you a solid answer. I do know this. As a catcher and with my catchers, I like them really close to the hitter. I saw a game the other day that was impacted by a foul tip drop. I think it was Tucker hit a foul tip, dropped, and then the next ball was a grand slam. I'm pretty certain that's how it worked. Mm. For me, the closer you are to the hitter, the less chance the ball has to go offline oh. and you have a better opportunity. I used to give my catchers a magnum bottle of wine if they caught the last foul tip of the game strike three, and then at the ball game, they'd get a magnum of wine for catching that foul tip. <laughs> so you got you got to be closer. you got to be close. The big thing is the hitter himself, that follow-through release of the top hand. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more vigilant offensively, the hitters do. Well, you got to punish them, Joe, the right? Because uh, <clears throat> not everybody <clears throat> swings that way. It seems to be a thing where the long, long follow-through comes around. I, I don't know what the punishment is, but you almost you have to disincentivize the, the hitter from doing that, right? <clears throat> It, well, I mean, to me, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not a legislator, so that would be a difficult thing for me to do. For me, it'd be more of a conversation. And like if, if say, I'm the, 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 the czar of not hitting catchers right. in the head with the follow through. <laughs> right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to this guy. I'm going to call these guys and say, listen, we have to do something about your, you know, the follow through, which they can't. Yeah. I mean, it's a one hand release. Guys are two hours in a bat and normally don't do something like that. The Charlie Lows of the past and uh, Herminiacs of the past, that was, a possi that was a possibility back then, too. So I think it's a discussion. I don't want to get right into litigation and, and start to <laughs> find people for these kind of things. So I would have, with the, I would have the discussion first. See, see I'm a, a disincentivizer. <clears throat> I would, I would, <laughs> I would admit, I, I've had enough. Because, Joe, it is. It's like I'd rather <clears throat> see guys get into a fist fight <clears throat> than have the bat. I mean, if you, you've probably in your lifetime been hit in the head with a bat. And, oh, yeah. you know, And it, it's a brutal <clears throat> thing to happen. And Sean Murphy's bleeding last night. They come out, check on him. Oh, he patted. Okay, go, get back out there. That's why the helmet became popular. Even when I was in the 70s, we used to have like a skull cap we yeah. put on. It didn't have the full uh, bill in the front. So we were protecting ourselves even back then. There was a time guys wouldn't do that. They'd wear their hat with the, the, the bill flipped up backwards, and you're totally exposed to it. And then there's the uh, hockey mask, which I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like the hockey mask. Uh, I just don't think the vision is good, and I just I think actually you're going to get your bell rung more with that as opposed to the conventional mask that when it's hit, yeah. it has a tendency to move a little bit, taking – some of the blow away. Talk I just, to the hitters. Listen, guys, let's clean it up. Yeah, I, I think it's an, it's an important safety measure, actually, that, that they should be addressed. Yeah, Joe, always a pleasure. Great talking to you. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, brother. Always good to see you, Ben.